What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we're coming to you from Doha, Qatar. We're going to do everything there is to do in this beautiful city. Let's do it! That's right, Island Hoppers. We've got 28 attractions for you to see and do here in Doha. There will be timestamp chapter markers in the description below. Now here we are at West Bay Beach, also known as WBB. Now there are many different beaches across the area of Doha and Qatar with the warm waters of the Persian Gulf. For this one here, it is 30 Qatari Rial per person for the weekdays, which includes a free use of the sunbeds with an umbrella. And then on the weekends, it's actually 45 Qatari Rial per person. Children under 12 are free. Now some of the other beaches that you may consider visiting while here are going to be B12 Beach Club. There's also Doha Sands. Katara has a beach, which we'll be showing you a little later. Samaisma Beach. I was here in November and you can see the weather is beautiful outside. Now here we are at the Pearl Marina here in Doha. Now the Pearl is a man-made island area known for having a Mediterranean luxury style. Here you'll find cafes, luxury style restaurants, also high-end boutiques. If you've ever been to the Dubai Marina, I would say this is very similar, although there are some aspects about the Pearl that I do prefer over the Dubai Marina. I found it to be a little bit more walkable and lively in some areas than even the Dubai Marina area. Doha in general reminds me of how Dubai was in 2012, so that gives you an idea of just how just how fast this place is growing. So now here we are at Mini Venice, also known as Kanat. And the Kanat Cordier is located on the Pearl Island. They have everything from water taxis to gondola rides. So going around this area known as the Venice of Qatar, it's very colorful. There are cafes and restaurants with shopping here as well. And as we continue to walk around here, I wanna talk about the dress code in Qatar. So although there is no formal dress code requirement, I did see people wearing shorts and tank tops, men and women including bikinis and other bathing suits on the beaches. It's just not necessarily recommended to be too revealing. And now here we are at Bellagio Mall. Bellagio Mall again has that Venice vibe with the gondola rides. Shopping malls across Doha and Qatar are very popular. There's a total of 98 malls in this country. There's also a theme park inside here called Gondolania Funfair Theme Park. Some of the rides you can expect to find in here are a little mini Ferris wheel, a log ride, a roller coaster, and other kiddie rides. It really makes sense to have an indoor theme park here in Qatar when it gets really hot in the summertime. I mean, look at how cool this roller coaster is, right? It's ripping right through here indoors. Then they also have an indoor ice skating rink, which is another great way to cool down right here on the ice. And then they have many different designer brand name stores that you can shop around and an excellent food court with plenty of variety from all over the world. No matter what mall you choose, going to malls in Qatar is something to do. Now here we are at the Katara Cultural Village. Let's take a look. Now in this area of Katara, you're gonna find a cultural village. They also have the hills, which is a park area, several different mosques, they have an art walk. So if you're looking to do some fun stuff, you gotta come out here to Katara Cultural Village area and explore. They also have the Lafayette galleries and a beach, as well as some dining. It has an old world feeling, but it's very modern. You could easily spend a whole day just exploring what's around here. It's surprisingly lush here in Doha compared to what you would see in Dubai. There's a lot more greenery. Now here we are at the Katara Amphitheater. Let's go inside. And this beautiful amphitheater here is a mix between classical Greek theater and Islamic features. It's really a cool theater if you can take in an event or watch a show from here, whatever the case may be. This really is a beautiful amphitheater, modern, right here along the coastline. Even when there is nothing going on, people still come here just to take pictures in this special facility. There's some really beautiful mosques down here in Katara. This one here is the Golden Mosque. This small Ottoman style mosque is actually decorated with gold chips that definitely shimmer when the sun beats down on it. It also has a minaret decorated in the gold chips. Non-Muslims are not allowed to go inside, but you can still walk around the outside and take pictures. 
Now for the high-end shopping area. This here is the Galleries Lafayette. You may know these from Paris. They also have some unique art features coming out of the roofs. These balloon cartoon creatures right along the 21 High Street Road. It's a nice place to just walk around. They have cafes. And of course, if you're into high-end shopping, you just go inside. You can beat the heat also by just walking through the mall area. And there's a good look at those cartoon balloons that are just popping out like octopus tentacles. And if you're looking for a place to have lunch, come here to the Boho Social. Perched up on the hill here with a great vantage point is the Boho Social right above the Katara Beach. They have good food. No alcohol is served here, but you can get a refreshing watermelon juice or a lemon mint and they have some really nice architecture on the inside here. I really enjoyed just relaxing and looking out over the ocean as you can see all those Dow boats in the harbor. Now's a good time to talk about the cuisine that you'll find. You'll obviously find plenty of Middle Eastern food, Lebanese, Turkish doner kebab. One of the Qatari foods that's a favorite is makbous. But to be honest, I love shawarma. Now here we are at Souk Waqif. Here at this very popular souk, you can find garments, spice, souvenirs, also handcrafts, shisha lounges, so much to see down here. The history of this souk dates back a hundred years to when the Bedouins would meet here and trade because it was actually in a dried up uh, riverbed known as Wadi Musharab. Around the year 2003, it fell into decline and was mostly destroyed by a fire. But then in 2006, the government of Qatar decided to restore this souk and preserve its architecture and historical identity. This is a really popular place with locals as well as tourists who just come down here to walk around, do some shopping and hang out. There's quite a bit of art down here and one of those pieces of art you should check out is the Golden Thumb. So I would say this was probably the most vibrant place in all of Doha. So if you're one of those people who's only got 24 hours in Qatar, this one is going to be the one you gotta hit. The best time to visit is in the evening during sunset. And if you walk across the street towards the Corniche, you'll see the Pearl Monument, and that's important because pearl divers are popular here. And now we're on a boat ride at the Corniche. From the Corniche here, you can easily get a boat tour out to Banana Island or do a Dow, which I did here. It's about a 30 minute tour around the harbor area. You get good looks at the skyline and people like to party and listen to music while you're out here. But really for me, it was the pictures of the skyline that really did it. And you get a good view of the Kurnish. And a Dow is simply a boat that was used to carry fruit, fresh water, other types of merchandise. It typically had a sail, depending on what the transport method was. But these were popular in areas around East Africa, Eastern Arabia, Yemen, Southeast Asia. You'll see these also. For a short tour like this, you should be able to get a ride for around 40 Qatari. Now here we are at the Corniche waterfront. So you'll notice across the Arabian Gulf here that there's many places called Corniche. And what it is basically is a road that winds right along the steep cliff or coastline. So in this case, it's not a cliff, it's a coastline. You'll see these in Abu Dhabi also, but yeah, that's what it means. And one of the best ways to do this path here is taking one of these scooters or a bike. If this is something you're gonna wanna do, definitely download the Bird or Lime app or any of these apps that you see from these rentals right here along the Corniche. And now what we're gonna do is ride the Metro. The Doha Metro became operational in May of 2019. It actually has 47 miles of track, which is 76 kilometers, 37 stations, and it will eventually connect to the Lusau light rail transit, which is set to open soon. So it does have a capable speed of 62 miles per hour. This is a super efficient way to get around Qatar. All right, now here we are at Lusail. Lusail is a village that's now turning into a mega city on the outskirts of Doha, about 15 miles away. It is now the second largest city in Qatar. And this is where they're building the light rail. And that unique structure you see right there is actually the Fairmont Hotel in the shape of a crescent moon. Now here we are at Al Maha Island. Al Maha is an entertainment and leisure hotspot. Here you'll find a theme park. You'll also find some 
oceanfront dining at these prop up food stands. It's also a great place to get views. So coming here at sunset is the time I recommend arriving. And the Winter Wonderland theme park entry fee is around 150 Qatari Rial. So if you get some time, come out here to Al Maha Island. Then as we're driving by here, you'll see the place Vendome. This is one of the largest malls in Qatar. It's a mega mall that just opened in 2022. And then for those of you who love the World Cup, you'll remember the Lusau Stadium. This is actually where they played the final game for the World Cup championship. The stadium currently is the second largest by capacity in Asia, housing 88,000 people but it will soon be reduced to around 40,000. And now here we are at Lucille Boulevard. Now Lucille Boulevard is right here in the heart of Lucille, and you'll notice that it stretches for around 1.3 kilometers. There's a mixed range of upscale retail offices, some premium dining, and it's still not completed. You will see that the light rail is just about to launch, but you may have to wait another six months to a year. Another thing to do is come take a picture with the whale shark hanging from the towers at Lucille Boulevard. Yeah, as I was walking down the boulevard, I saw this blue light downrange and I was like, what is that? And I knew it was a whale shark, but as I got closer, I was so impressed by it that I can honestly tell you, come here, take a picture with this thing at night. It's bigger than you think. It's actually being held up by these cables from the towers nearby. Whale sharks are often spotted around the Persian Gulf area just off the coast of Qatar. So after walking around Lucille Boulevard at night, the next day you can go on a desert tour and check out some of the historical villages, do a dunes tour, ride some camels, really a lot to see and do out there in that desert. Desert tours are typically three hours and end up costing around 75 US. Now here we are at the National Museum of Qatar. This museum actually blew me away. It's a lot more impressive than I thought. If you look at the design of it, that's very interesting. But once you go inside, it's like, wow, this is really cool. It does cost around 50 Qatari Rial for non-resident. They talk about the formation of Qatar from a geological perspective, and then they give some history about the animals and the plant life, as well as the ancestral people who were living here for many centuries. Not much is known about Qatar before the 18th century, but there was a group of Bedouin nomads. And then Qatar's modern history really began around 1766 when the migration came to the peninsula from Kuwait, notably the Khalifa family. Something also to know is that Qatar is one of the richest countries in the world because it is very oil rich. And because of that wealth from the oil, that is what has helped supercharge this country's growth in making it one of the most advanced countries in the Middle East. It's definitely one of the premier smart cities of the world. Now here we are at the Islamic Art Museum. And this beautiful museum right along the waterfront here costs around 50 Qatari Rial per person. So you can actually save money if you do three museum tours in one. And those would be the National Museum, the Islamic Art Museum, and the Sports Museum. But as far as this museum goes, you can expect to find plenty of art from all across Persia, Iran, Turkey, here locally in Saudi Arabia, the areas. You can do a quick tour of the museum in about an hour and a half, but really if you want to get but really if you want to get into it and learn as much as you possibly can, you're probably going to need around a half a day at least. There's that much information and that many exhibits for you to explore here. Also, if you guys are enjoying this video so far, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. We did a Dubai things to do video. I'll put a link to that in the description below and in the comments. I highly encourage you guys to watch that one also. We also did an Abu Dhabi travel guide. I would say that Doha is more similar to Abu Dhabi than it is Dubai. And now here we are at the National Library. Aside from being a really cool structure and awesome museum to take pictures of, there's a lot of books in here. I mean, really amazed at how many books. And there's a lot of people that go here. It's not one of those places that's lacking in visitors. In fact, when I came here to the National Library, the parking lot was full, so they had overflow parking and turning people away. So keep that in mind when making a trip out here. With that being said, the population of Qatar is around 2.6 million people, 
and over 70% of those people are from foreign countries. Now here we are at Aspire Park. Like I said, there's many different parks and green areas around Qatar, which really surprised me. So that's good to see, but this is a beautiful park, very green with plenty of trees. And it's actually a sports park. There's stadiums nearby where they played several World Cup matches. You'll also notice that they have the torch, which is a tall tower that's now a hotel. You can go up to the 22nd floor to the cafe if you would like. But this is a really cool building right there next to the mall called the Villaggio, which we talked about previously. And now I want to take some time to introduce you to one of my tour guides. All right, guys, so when you're coming to Doha, if you're looking for a travel guide or someone to contact before you get here, if you have questions, contact Shaquille. He's been showing me all around Doha, and I'd like to introduce you to him. Here he is. Yeah. Uh, hi, guys. When you come to Doha, and uh, if you need any question and any need a seat tour guide, my services, so I am available like uh, every time. And if you ask any questions, so I'm available too. And this is my pleasure. And I'll put his Instagram link right here on the screen. Okay, thank you so much. All right, everybody. And on that note, that's going to conclude this episode of Island Hopper TV. Like I said, please do consider watching more of our other videos from the Middle East, such as our Dubai tour, as well as Abu Dhabi. I will put the links to that in the description below. And thank you to all of our subscribers and channel members. We will see you on the next one.